Pathlook is the intelligent tool for website lead generation. With increasing online competition, over 98% of website visitors don't convert. The ability to successfully show your value proposition and support visitors in the buying journey separates you from the competition online. Pathlook qualifies and converts leads on your website by figuring out where they are in the buying journey and influencing them in key decision moments with relevant micro experiences like case studies, inch videos, and much more. Stay relevant to your visitors and increase conversions by 50%. Add Pathmook to your website in seconds. Let the, let the AI do all the work and get, fit, get 50% more qualified leads while you keep doing marketing and sales as usual. Check us on pathmonk.com. All right. Welcome to today's episode. Let's talk about today's guest. We have Farah Van Kloon from Rohiro, Director of Marketing. How are you doing today, Farah? I'm doing great. Thank you. How are you, Ernesto? I'm doing great, great. Thank you so much for asking, Farah. And well, I'm sure our listeners are tuning in wondering what Rohiram is all about. So uh, let's kick it off with that, Farah. In your own words, can you tell us a little bit more? Sure. So Rohiram owns the patent on organization-specific generated generative AI technology. So what that means is Rohiram uses a company's own data, so its own database, its own knowledge base to generate content that's specific to the company. So whether it's RFP responses, technical papers, any long form complex content, Rohirm can generate that for you in minutes. Um, and it's all based on your own company's information. So it's not open to the internet. Okay, interesting, You're right? Perfect. And so that way our listeners can get a good understanding there. What, what would you say is a key problem that you guys like to solve for clients then? So, the, so basically the company was founded because our CEO wanted to get some of his time back. So the whole uh, vision of the company is to give people some time back, give them their weekend back. So it's mostly um, efficiencies and time gains. So for example, uh, like when we did the human versus AI trial uh, with our beta product, uh, that, like in some instances, the AI generated the first draft of a proposal or a proposal response 4,000% faster than a human would. So what that means is like, we're not giving you back 10, 15 minutes. We're giving you back days, um, which obviously is uh, very welcomed by the business because it helps their growth. But then also for individuals, you know, they get to focus on the interesting work. They don't have to work weekends. And um, so that's our promise to our users. Definitely important. All right. I'll, 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 <clears throat> awesome to hear that from, from, from you. Um, so that is there a certain vertical segment that you guys like to go for that? Is there an ideal ICP there for, for here? Yeah. So our ICP, in terms of job title, they're usually chief growth officers or chief revenue officers. Um, in terms of verticals, it's um, defense and aerospace, government contracting, healthcare, um, higher education. Um, basically any business that relies on producing long form complex documents to grow. So like the most straightforward example would be RFP responses. So sometimes they would take weeks for a company to generate that response. And with Rohirrim, we cut down that time very, very significantly to days, if not hours. That's, that's amazing to hear that. And Curtis, Selena, how would somebody then usually find out about Rohirrim? Is there a top client that was shut up for you guys? So the company has been around for a couple of years now, and mostly we've been growing very quickly, but it's mostly been um, our leadership team has a lot of connections in the industry. Our CEO has been in the AI industry for a long time. So they leverage a lot of those personal relationships and their network within the, within the AI community to get new partnerships and new customers on board. And then we also attended a lot of industry events where we also got a lot of a lot of our customers. Um, the reason we've been focusing more on relationship building, word of mouth, is because we didn't have a very um, robust marketing team. Um, so I'm the first marketing hire. So I'm building up the, the marketing team from scratch right now. So we have a lot of cool strategies and interesting channels that we plan on using going forward, but it's all being set up right now. I would say if you check back in a couple of weeks, you're going to notice a very different online presence for us. All right. Interesting. All right. Love, love, love that. And so that way our listeners that are tuned in can go ahead and visit you. They can always check you out at rohero.ai. 
what role then does the website play for client acquisition? That's correct. So we had an old website um, that we've had, I think, for around a year. And we just launched our new website last week. So I'm glad we're doing this this week. Um, and basically with our old website, we received a lot of feedback from website visitors and from our customers um, that they weren't sure what it is we did. We tried to be a catch-all for like any Gen AI, like org specific needs. Um, and then we listened to that feedback and now we redid our website and focused a lot on the use cases that we think we serve the best. Um, and it has a new look. So I think going forward, um, the, the website's going to play a much bigger role in telling our story, the Rohirrim story and the story of our platform, which is Rohan RFP. I think it speaks more to our customers' pain points. It talks more about how we solve those pain points which from my experience is always what, what uh, users want to see on a website when they visit a website. Definitely important. Okay, awesome. I'd love to hear that then. And so <clears throat> is there any tools then or tips that you would recommend to our listeners as far as a website lead generation? Yeah, so I tested websites to death uh, over the years. So I have a lot of tips. They're not fancy. So I don't like for me, it's like it's about the strategy. It's not about the tool. So I can tell you some things that have really worked for me in the past. Um, and I like I've tested all of them. I didn't have the data off the top of my head, but all the tests were very conclusive. So the first thing is having the form on the top right hand corner of a page rather than at the bottom or like a, a button that leads to the form. Um, and this is one of those things where there's always some push and pull with the design team because let's be honest, it's not the nicest design to have the form on, like right in front of you when you visit a page, but it really does convert better. So I always have to have these conversations with our designers like, look, I know, I know you have a better design. I really do, <laughs> but I'm telling you, we're going to get more leads this way. And the other thing that I found really helpful is having a video in the header banner um, that basically summarizes what the page is about and what the product is about, or if it's like a homepage, what the company is about. Every time that I had a video in the header banner, we saw more conversions. We saw more, more form fills. Even if people don't complete the entire video, even if they don't watch the entire video, we still find more form fills just by having the video. Um, another thing that has worked really well was obviously the content, um, I, I like to have the content all focused around our users' pain points. So people want to buy products that are going to make their lives better. So when they land on your homepage or on your web page, they want to see that you're going to help them. You're going to make their lives better. So I always like to focus the content on pain points, and this is how we solve the pain points. And then in terms of like design, I um, lots of white space, lots of product images, icons. I think it helps people stay on the page longer. Uh, and I do want more, I still have more tips if you want. <laughs> like you open the can of worms. <laughs> um, another thing that worked really well for us, and I think you'll find this surprising. So um, at one of my companies, we had a free product and we had products that weren't free. And every time you put the free button, like try for free or download for free next to uh, book a demo or contact a consultant button, if you have them side by side, we noticed that the CTRs for both buttons went up. So our the hypothesis that we started with was if you have a free button, nobody's gonna click on the other button. But we noticed that click through rates for both went up. So it's just it was a win-win. Um and then finally, I think this is the last thing, is just testing. I'm constantly testing. I have a testing roadmap and just always launching one test after the other because there is no perfect web page. I don't think there is. There's always room for improvement. So just keep testing and find out what works for you and your customers. And yeah, I think uh, that's the shortest path to success. Definitely. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. <clears throat> perfect. And so I love, love the knowledge that you that you provide there. I mean, you have the experience, no doubting that. So then how does how does your 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 day look like? I mean, like you mentioned, you're the, the first marketing person there at Rohira. Uh, you're the director of marketing. What what are some key tasks then that you like to focus on your day-to-day -day work? So um, so right now I do a little bit of everything. So I'm doing product marketing, customer marketing, demand gen, content marketing, corporate comms, <laughs> so literally everything. 
And it's helpful that in my past life, prior to Rahiram, I did get to do a lot of those things. I mean, pretty much all of them in my previous job. So I do feel like I had this skill set. The one thing is, though, um, my day is kind of all over the place. So like, I'll tell you about yesterday, for example. So the first thing I did was I started working on a roadmap deck for a client meeting. So a product roadmap deck for a client meeting. Then I was writing a press release for a new partnership we're announcing. And then I was working on our social media calendar. And then I was going over keyword research and then customer webinars, uh, analyst deck. So it's like I'm jumping from one completely different thing to the other all day long. And for me, it works well with my personality. I love the momentum and the challenge and the excitement so for me it works really well but i know for some people they'd be like whoa like <laughs> this, is, this is too schizophrenic all right awesome 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 to hear that so then how do you like to stay up to date then with all the trends in the marketing world as far as strategies news uh, is there a preferred channel that you like to go with yeah so um so look i'll be honest like i you know, I, I work long days and I have a toddler at home. So I used to read more marketing books when I had more time. But now I get most of my news and marketing information from LinkedIn and from blogs. So I scroll through LinkedIn every day and, see, you know, I follow certain influencers and certain blogs on LinkedIn and see what they're talking about. Um, and usually what happens to me if they're, someone's posting about a topic I'm really interested in. I'll go through a rabbit hole of like learning everything there is to know about this topic. Um, and, and yeah, so like, I'll tell you like some of the influencers that I follow are Kyle Poyer. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, Matthew Reeves. Um, and then some of the blogs are like marketing brew. Um, uh, what is that? Uh, e-marketer marketing prof. So, you know, just, uh, just on uh, bite sized content on LinkedIn. I love it. I mean, I, I've been using LinkedIn, right? And there's some free stuff out there that people are giving out. So it's, it's awesome to see that and uh, real, real, really nice tool there for everybody. Yeah, there's so many smart people on LinkedIn. Uh, so it's it's pretty nice, like you said, that they share all this information for free. Exactly. I yep, love it. Uh, so then, Farah, let, let's, let, let's switch to our next section then here, which is our rapid fire question, Riles. Are you ready for those? Rapid fire. Okay. And... Um, <laughs> Okay, yeah, let's do this. All right, perfect. Then first off then, Farah, is what is the last book that you read? So the last book that I read was a really funny novel called The Lemon by Essie Boyd. It's hilarious. I highly recommend it. Okay, interesting. Perfect. Next up then is if there would be no boundaries in technology, what would be that one thing that you want to have fixed for your role as a marketer today? You're not going to like my answer, but honestly, this is what I'm going to say is we don't need more tech. Like I'm sure if anyone has a need, they can go online and find a product that fulfills that need. My biggest thing with technology is just make it work better. Like stop adding products, stop adding features, just make the product that exists work better. Like I haven't found a presentation software that I think is amazing. Like I still struggle with that. So there, I have so many examples like that. Just make products work better. Definitely. Okay. I love, 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 love that to hear that. Then, um, so that if there's one repetitive task that you could automate, what would that be? Um, this is something super silly, but I just really hated doing it when I was more junior in my career. I haven't done it in a really long time, but. Like like ten years ago, it was probably my most annoying thing that I had to do, which is timesheets. I really feel like there has to be a better way of AI scanning your emails or your calendar and figuring out where you're spending your day and just kind of automating that for you. There maybe it exists, and I haven't heard of it, but that's one thing where I'd be like, yes, let's buy that for the team. Okay, all right, interesting. Love, love, love that. Um... And so, I mean, you have the experience already, right, in the marketing world, uh, Farrah, no doubting that. So that, what would be that one piece of advice that you would give yourself if you were to restart your journey as a marketer today? Is this a rapid fire prospect? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would say like two things, but they're very related. So the first thing I would say is 
we're not saving life. And the second thing I would say is all you can do is your best. And I learned that really the hard way. Um, I've worked in very, very stressful jobs where everything was an emergency. Every day we're sounding the alarm bell 20 times and everyone's always panicked. And that, that had a really negative effect on my mental health. And I wish I could go back like 10 years ago, maybe even seven years ago, and just tell myself, look, if, if you know, an ad is released a day late, no one's going to die. Like if a deck, you know, one slide on a deck is not perfect, doesn't matter. It's going to be okay. So that's why, what I would want to tell my younger self. Okay, awesome. Some great advice there, not just for yourself, but for our listeners who are tuned in. And so, uh, Farrah, we are coming to the end of the show here, but before we do, Ed, I do want to give you the last word. Say so and forget everything about the interview today. What is that one thing they should remember about Rohirrim? About Rohirrim? Um, I think the one thing people should remember about Rohirrim is I would keep checking back. Um, right now we have, you know, one product, we're building more product, but I think our vision is to make everyone's work life better. Just find those time efficiencies, find those, um, you know, other um, areas for automation to give people time back to make their lives, their work lives better. Perfect. Awesome. Lo lo love that. And to our listeners, you could always check them out uh, at rohirum.ai. Win more business with the leading RFP AI automation platform. Farah, thank you so much for being on with us today. <laughs> to our listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm looking forward to our next episode at Pathmo Presents. Thanks a lot, Thanks for Farrah. having me. Bye.